Hello and welcome to Run Testers. My name's Nick, and this is our full review of the Puma Voyage Nitro 3. So the Voyage Nitro 3 is a trail running shoe from Puma. It's part of their Seasons line of trail-focused shoes and gear. And obviously it's the third generation of the shoe, although I haven't tested either of the previous two generations, so I can't really comment too much on how it compares to those. It costs £120 in the UK, $140 in the US. It weighs 286 grams, or 10.1 ounces in a My UK size 9. And it's got a 10 millimeter drop with a heel height of 35 millimeters and a forefoot height of 25 millimeters. So with the Voyage Nitro, what you've got is a full Nitro foam midsole. So that's the foam that's been used on popular road running shoes like the Velocity Nitro, DV8 Nitro. It is a nitrogen infused TPEE foam. And you've got a fair old wedge of it there in this shoe so a pretty good foam i think to be used on the trails because it is fairly resilient and not too squishy and unstable for what is mainly a road foam and you've got a puma grip atr outsole with power adapt lugs so they're fairly deep lugs but they're also quite wide and flat so it does give you that all-terrain grip where they're going to be reasonably smooth riding on hard surfaces but you have got a little bit of bite there for softer ground it's quite interesting i think they've got little cutouts in the rubber of the outsole underneath the lugs which i guess just reduces the weight a little bit without really affecting anything about the performance of the shoe it's quite a, quite a good idea i think then the upper you've got an internal booty and then a mono mesh layer on top of that that basically acts as a debris shield it's quite a dense mesh there you've also got a toe bumper going on and quite an interesting lacing system so obviously you've got the booty at the back here which extends quite far up the foot and with a lot of padding on the inside of the heel there and then you've got these interesting kind of lace eyelets here these big ones that you use to pull it through you don't really get the option to heel lock the shoe but i haven't really needed to uh, because with these eyelets you can get a really tight fit and hold the foot fairly, very firmly in place. It's also a little uh, lace garage there if you want to use that and a pull tab to help you get it on and an internal heel counter as well to add some more stability to the shoe. This is the standard version of the Voyage Nitro 3. There's also a Gore-Tex version uh, which costs a little bit more but doesn't seem to add too much weight to the shoe looking at the spec so that might be a good option for the winter months if it's uh, cold and wet where you are. So I've had no problems with the fit of the Puma Voyage Nitro 3 in my normal running shoe size. This is a UK 9, it's what I wear across Puma's range, and I found the fit to be pretty much spot on all round. It's, it's not the largest and widest toe box in the world, but I have a fairly narrow foot, uh, and this fits me really well, so no concerns there for me. And then you've got a really good hold around the midfoot and heel, like I said, with this interesting lacing system working really well to make it quite easy, actually, to get a good lockdown fit without having to do things like heel locking. And I didn't have any movement of my foot when running down hills, didn't hit the front of the shoe at all or anything like that. So yeah, fit was very good for me to the same size I've been using for all of Puma's other road shoes uh, and indeed the fast track nitro uh, road to trail shoe. So I've run 50 kilometers in the Puma Voyage Nitro 3 and most of that has been around me locally so that's an Epping Forest mainly in uh, North London which is a pretty standard English forest pretty muddy at this time of year but pretty well groomed tracks I've taken it onto some single track there to get into some deeper mud and some narrower twisting stuff and then over the weekend I also went up to Scotland and I was in the Pentlands a National Park just aside Edinburgh and I was running up and down some steeper climbs there with very grassy fell style climbs but also some slightly rockier stuff up there and a bit of frozen ground as well mostly I've been using it for pretty easy runs or exploring runs like up in Scotland but I have moved a little bit faster in the shoe to see how it works almost as a daily trainer you can use on the trails. So I'd say the ride is good uh, it's not really soft at all with the nitro foam there but it, it is comfortable. I'm a big fan of this nitro foam I like it a lot on the road shoes as well it's just it's got a good resiliency to it it does give you a little bit of bounce back it doesn't sink in too much but it is comfortable it's a really well balanced foam I think for a shoe you can use for a nice variety of runs it feels good over longer runs not harsh at all but I can up the pace a little bit it's also not a very heavy foam because the whole shoe itself is quite light despite the fairly large outsole you have here. I think some people might want a little bit more cushion though than what you get from the shoe particularly under the forefoot with that high drop. I think that's probably more going to be true if you're looking at rockier runs in particular you know hard rock runs lots of jagged edges. I didn't do a lot of that kind of running for me it almost feels a little bit better suited to softer stuff so maybe if you're on those runs without a rock plate or anything in that midsole it might be a little bit uncomfortable under the forefoot like I say because the drop does mean the stack there is it's still 25 millimeters but these days that's a reasonably low stack I guess. So yeah I do think it's 
a shoe that's fine for cruising, but there is a bit of an edge there if you do want to up the pace uh, and you're not just going out for an explorer on the trails, you want to push a bit harder, it's got a bit of an edge there for that. Don't think it's great for all out speed, but for kind of daily training runs, a bit of tempo, or maybe looking at long distance trail races, uh, I think it's a nice option for those. But mostly I see it more as a fairly relaxed run shoe that's really mostly comfortable and just good for you know a nice mix of terrains and a nice mix of paces. Uh, one thing I did notice that I didn't find it the most flexible shoe, which is interesting because there is no rock plate in there and you've got a reasonably you know softish foam there with nitro foam but it did find it became a bit of a, a thick wedge underneath if you're hitting uneven ground like pulling your foot around a little bit rather than kind of flexing and moving with the ground there so that was partly because it was very cold where i was in scotland so the foam was very cold but don't normally notice a huge difference with nitro foam in different temperatures so i think that's partly just the fact it's got fairly high stack uh, with uh, all that nitro foam there and it does act as a bit of a wedge so if you are like i say again on that kind of jagged terrain when you're going to be moving your foot a lot it doesn't mold to it as well as some other shoes grip has been really good for me though i think it's a really versatile outside it does work well on lots of stuff so i've done extended road sections around me even on fairly frosty roads a little bit of ice there it does grip really well has done pretty well in the mud of the forest even when i've gone off the main trails in Epping forest and onto some really muddy stuff at this time of year it's not something you want to use for extended muddy runs but it certainly won't immediately come unstuck if you hit a deep patch so it's got a bit of versatility on that side and up in scotland i was going up and down some pretty steep descents some like i say were grassy fell style descents and it again does pretty well on those although it was quite cold so the ground was reasonably hard and then on some slightly rockier stuff as well up there it just gripped pretty well on all those conditions like nothing was too technical too extreme or anything like that could handle everything but say if you're going to go for deeper mud then you probably want something a bit longer in terms of the lugs you have and if you are going to maybe do extended fell runs lots and lots of up and down and grass in a mix of conditions then you might again want something a little bit more specific to those kind of conditions but as a general all-terrain shoe i think it does a really good job good on the road good on mild trails good on twisty stuff bit of mud bit of climbing up and down maybe not so great on just all rocky trails like i talked about because of the comfort factor but in terms of grip i think it does do a really good job on a nice wide range of terrains all in all the run test to me it felt like a really nicely rounded shoe that you could use for a lot of different stuff like it was great to take away to edinburgh for a mix of a bit of road and trail runs and then i'm going away on another trip this weekend and i don't really know what i'm gonna be running on yet and i probably won't know until i'm actually out running on it and that's exactly the kind of shoe that you want for that because it will just go out and you can be pretty sure it's going to grip well be comfortable and just handle anything you throw at it within reason so yeah a nice well-rounded shoe Say the Voyage Nitro 3 is another really solid shoe from Puma. Like I said, there's a lot with shoe, Puma shoes. They don't necessarily wow you out the box. The ride isn't extraordinary. It's not incredibly bouncy or anything like that, but you really just warm to them over time because they're very practical shoes. They deliver on a wide range of runs. They are pretty comfortable. They are versatile. They always grip well, and it's just the kind of shoe you can buy pretty safe in the knowledge it's going to do a decent job uh, across a nice range of runs, and that's the case with the Voyage Nitro 3 for sure. Good all-terrain shoe, good grip, good comfort. Got the Gore-Tex version there, which I think would be a really solid win interruption in lots of places as well so yeah it's just a shoe that ticks a lot of boxes like i said it doesn't necessarily blow you away but if you just want a solid trail shoe in your wardrobe that you can handle a bit of everything take on trips really good option so overall i think it probably leans slightly more towards softer ground i'd say like having used it mostly on soft ground i think it's a bit more comfortable on that like it does have a bit more bounce if you're on hard ground like on the road to and from trails i noticed that a bit more but i think the grip and the setup with the foam in the midsole there feels really nice on soft ground and that's what mainly i'll be using it on but yeah like i said i have those some caveats and concerns about how it would feel on really jagged rocky stuff without the rock plate or anything like that and that's why i probably push it more towards that softer side of things actually did remind me a lot of the uh, Saucony exodus ultra 2 a shoe it's pretty much favorite trail shoe of the year so far like a really versatile comfortable good value shoe that does a lot of stuff really quite well can go long in it go short in it i think the exodus ultra has a slightly more rocked ride for sure and i think it probably be a lot it'll be a little bit more comfortable if you were looking at really long ultra length runs in the shoe and then i think you maybe get a little bit more bounce back from the foam in the uh, puma voyage nitro too i slightly prefer the way the grip is set up on this it feels a bit more suited to all terrains in terms of how it performs on the road and uh, harder stuff i think the uh, Saucony has got really good grip as well but has a little bit more bite i think it's certainly more comfortable than the uh, Saucony peregrine another really good shoe i think that does work on a mix of terrains but again if you're looking at a bit more kind of smoother stuff road to and from icy pavements that kind of thing i think the uh, voyage nitro 3 is a little bit better for that kind of thing so it reminds me a little bit of the catamount the brooks catamount 2 in terms of the feel of the midsole but the catamount is much more suited to harder ground it's got the rock plate in there and the outsole is not so great on soft stuff at all so it's almost like a softer ground counterpart to the catapult in some ways so and as always a puma you've got pretty good value here as well it's not exceptionally cheap but it's good value and 
pops up in sales as always uh, over Black Friday. I think Puma had I think 25% of pretty much the entire range. So that's something to look out for too. I do think it's just a really good solid shoe. It's not one I'd say rush out and buy immediately. It's going to change your life. A fantastic trail shoe. It's just a really solid shoe that if you do pick up, I don't think you'll be disappointed. It'll do a lot of jobs pretty well. And in the winter in particular, I think the Gore-Tex version is a really nice thing maybe to have around if you are doing a mix of roads and light trails or sticking to the trails entirely. You've got good grip and then that slightly warmer upper because this was probably a tad too breathable when I was up in Scotland and it was uh, zero degrees. So that's our review of the Puma Voyage Nitro 3. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Please do like and subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.